Hey you guys, you're watching PRK Radio. If this is your first time here, I'm Jimmy, KI5PRK. And uh, if you're returning, then thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, the channel is really doing great and it's because of people like you. Uh, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, uh, hit the like button if you like this content, and uh, click that little bell and you'll be notified the next time I drop a video. Uh, anyways, now that I got all that out of the way, um, I wanted to talk about something today uh, that I think is pretty important for a new ham. Um, who's getting into the hobby, especially if you're playing around with different antennas. And that is uh, getting yourself a, a good antenna analyzer. Um, and good being the operative word, right? There are lots of flavors of analyzers out there on the market. Um, there's the high dollar stuff uh, from Rig Expert. I have one of their cheaper versions right here. This is the Rig Expert Stick 230. This is a great antenna analyzer, um, but it's a little on the pricey side. Uh, right now, I believe this is going for like 320 bucks. Um, so if you're new ham, this is probably, there's a good chance this is out of your price range, right? And that's fine, because there are better options, or at least options at a better price. And uh, I think you know where this is going if you've watched any videos on YouTube at all. This is going straight to the Nano VNA. Uh, this is the Nano VNA, uh, what is it, the H4, and uh, this thing is pretty nice for what you get. And to give you a, an idea, uh, this guy is going for like 65 bucks right now. So 320, 65. You do the math, whatever works in your budget. Um, I have both, and I paid for both, and that's important. Actually, I didn't. I paid for this one but I received this one from a relative as a gift last Christmas. Um, so full disclosure, no one sent this to me to review. Um, I put it on a wish list and uh, I forget who gave it to me, but uh, somebody saw that wish list on Amazon and grabbed this and, and gave this to me as a gift. And I was like super grateful, but to be fair, I kind of sat on this thing for a while. I was a little intimidated by it and wasn't sure quite how to use it. So I had to do a little research and figure out how to use the thing. But uh, I, I'm okay with it. I'm not going to say I'm an expert, but luckily there's YouTube University, so I can jump out there and find more videos when I want to figure out how to do something. Um, but this thing is great. Got a four inch screen. Um, it's battery powered, a USB-C to charge it. Um, this will measure uh, any antenna that I'm ever going to have. Uh, it'll measure my uh, HF antennas, uh, UHF and VHF antennas. So uh, this thing is very versatile and can do a lot, take a lot of different measurements. It will also measure um, your coax. So that's another valuable thing that it can do that uh, your antenna analyzer can't do actually. So, um, or at least this analyzer can't do. How about that? This thing can measure your coax and let you know where you stand on, you know, on your coax and, and, if, and if it's any good. Um, so I haven't really played around with a whole lot of that, but I can tell you that I've measured my, uh, my infed half wave out here and I'll show you that in just a second. And, uh, it works really great. Look, we're hams. We are not, uh, lab techs. We are not technicians in a lab doing work. If you are, that's great. But most of us aren't. Um, uh, most of us just need an inexpensive tool that can be used to test their antennas, check their SWR, make sure that they're within a good operating range. Pick yourself up one of these or one of these, whatever you want. Um, you can get a you can get a stick. Uh, they make other variants of this, but they go up in price. So just know that. Um, I think this is kind of the entry level uh, Rig Expert stick. Um, this has that e-ink display on it, which is actually really nice. Outside, I will say I can read this better than I can read that. Outside, this is very hard to read. This reads really is is really easy to read because of that e-ink display, as you can see. So. Um, but for the money, I'll shade this, <laughs> I'll get underneath a tree <laughs> and I can read this just fine. So, um, but anyways, let's kind of walk through, uh, the Nano VNA a little bit and, uh, you know, I can show you guys how, how I've got it measuring my antenna right now. Cause I've got it hooked up to my, uh, Messi and Poloni coax here. So when you first boot it up, you're kind of faced with this hodgepodge of information here and Pardon me, I'm going to do my best to... So I'm going to go to Display, Trace, and I'm going to turn all these traces off because it, it comes up with everything that uh, 
everything that the thing will do, which is way more, it's information overload, right? So I turn all those traces off, just leave trace zero on. Go back. I'm gonna format SWR. Go back. Go back again. And we're gonna set our stimulus. And let's just say we wanna do 20 meters. Um, so we're gonna do 14 megahertz. And it's our start. Our stop is gonna be 14.350 megahertz, right? Oh, it's 1.6 megahertz. I totally messed that up. Hold on. Uh, stimulus set my start at 14 megahertz. There we go. All right, so now this is testing uh, my antenna that's currently outside right now is an infed half wave. It's a Nelson's infed half wave, uh, and it is cut for 40, 20, 15, and 10. Oddly enough, I get 12 uh, really, really well, and I can even do 17 on it if I touch it up with a tuner. Um, I think 17 is like 2 to 1, something like that. So I can bump the tuner on if I really want to get on 17 with it, and it works just fine. Um, but this is showing you 20 meters. Now you see this marker over here. I can grab this marker with the stylus or I can just use this little jog wheel at the top and I can move the marker. Now, if you see that, can you see that? Here's the frequency that that marker sitting on is 14.213 and it's at 1.3, uh, 1.3 to one. So this is actually the best SWR is way down here, like in the, in the CW and, and um, in the data section. But uh, you can see throughout the entire voice section, if we come up a little bit, um, let's get up here. Okay, what's happening? All right, so at 14.234, I'm still at 1.3 to 1. I mean, this thing is is in great shape. Come all the way up here to 350. And I'm still at 1.4 to 1. So the the antenna's great, and you know that now because you've been able to test it, right? Um, let's say we wanted to change that, and we want to look at the whole span that this antenna can do. We can do that really quick. We just tap, and we go start. And since it's cut for 40 meters, let's say 7 megahertz. Okay, there's seven right down here is your start is your seven megahertz and let's set your stop at 30 megahertz and watch this bam this is every one of the bands every single one um and actually it'll come in better if i do this so let's set my start at three megahertz there we go so now every one of these dips is where we're resonant so if we move the marker, ooh, it moves too fast. So at 7.050, it's 1.2 to 1. You can see that right here. 1.2 to 1 at 7.050. Uh, 1.2 to 1 at 14.070, right? So right there, 1.6 to 1, still in good shape. All these are doable SWRs. You don't need 1 to 1, guys. You really don't. Um, if you're below, say, two to one, I would rock it. All right, so that is check that out. So that's twenty five point nine five zero megahertz. Um, if I come up a little bit, if I go back down a little bit, sorry. So for 12 meters, uh, 12 meter voice, 24,930 to 24,990. Um, I mean, it's 1.2 to 1 at 24,870. 25, 25.140 megahertz. It's at 1.1. So for whatever reason, this antenna, which should not be resonant on 12, is resonant on 12. And I'm not knocking it. And then you come back down here 
and you're still getting into 10 meter band. So like 1.7 on a 28.380. So that's, to, that's, you know, that's right in the middle of the voice section for 10 meters is still in good shape. So um, no, all of these are below two. Uh, you, you really can't beat it. And you kind of get an extra band here because this thing's really only supposed to be good for 40, 20, 15, and 10. But for whatever reason, I'm getting 40, 20, 15, 12, and 10. So I'm getting five bands instead of four. I can't really beat that. So I'm telling you, you can't really go wrong with one of these. Um, it's an excellent value for what you're getting. Um, it's, it's, you know, you're going to be able to test your antennas. Um, you can learn a little bit. You can test your coax with it. And all of that for like $65. Um, and you can't do that with a $320 uh, rig, rig expert here. You just can't do it. So, um, you know, it kind of is what it is, but, uh, you know, a, a nano BNA to me, I don't know, kind of the, kind of the sweet spot. It's, it's, it's one of the rarities in ham radio, right? It's an inexpensive tool. Um, so, uh, everything else is pretty expensive. So, um, it's about time you, you run across something that is, it fits into the budget a little better. Um, I would absolutely recommend a new ham, get one of these as soon as you can in your kit. Um, well, what do I use these for? Well, um, let me, let me put this thing down and, uh, turn the camera around and we'll close this out and I'll tell you what I use it for. Now, what do I use this for? Uh, mostly, um, what type of antenna? I don't, on an infed half wave that's already resonant, um, on, you know, four bands or in my case five, um, I don't use it that often. I tell you where the best use of this is for uh, like the vertical rip, the whips. Um, I have the SS25 uh, from Chameleon and that ground spike and all that set up. When I throw this thing, when I throw that thing up in the air, um, I got to test it because I got to kind of play with the antenna, right? You have to kind of raise and lower uh, the whip to get it, you know, in that sweet spot. That's an antenna that you can, if you really want to chase that one-to-one -one all the time, you can absolutely do it with one of those. Um, so, and I recommend it because they're great antennas. That's where I would use this, um, especially like the first going, you know, the first time you do it, then you can kind of get slick and, and maybe put some marks on the, uh, on the antenna with a Sharpie and that'll, uh, give you, that'll put you back in that sweet spot the next time you raise it, raise it up. You know, I think this is a great piece of kit, uh, that every ham should put in their toolbox and take it with you to the field. Um, and use it when you're playing around with your antenna just to make sure your SWR is right and you don't hurt your radio. Most of these new modern radios are going to fold back and they're not going to they're not going to transmit if the SWR is too far out of whack. But this gives you peace of mind that you know before you hook that coax up to your transceiver, you're going to be in good shape. So um, and you know taking it to the field couldn't be easier. Get yourself one of these guys. I have dumped everything. Yep, sure did. When you want to take this to the field, this is probably the best way to do it. Um, this is just a case that I got off of Etsy uh, from a maker out there that uh, has a 3D printer. This is a fantastic little case. Uh, 3D print it up in whatever color you want. You just specify the color. Um, I'll try to go find his link on it. I'll link to his store on Etsy and I'll leave it down in the description if I can find it. Um, this These cases are great for this. Um, they literally, I mean, everything about it is 3D printed except for, you know, the pins and whatnot, but uh, gives you a place to put your, your Nano VNA right here in the top. You got a little couple, got a couple of uh, rubber pads here that holds the, 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 the VNA down in there. But then underneath this little cover is all the bits and pieces that you need that come with your kit. So um, keeps it all organized for you. And you can absolutely, you know, there's magnets down in here. Uh, and little magnets there um, that grab it on the corners that hold that in there. And so keeps everything, uh, you know, everything in its place. And you can take it out to the field with you just like that. And you're not going to lose anything. Um, you just make sure you put your bits and pieces back. <laughs> I don't think you could go wrong with a tool like this in your kit. Um, it's forced me to learn something new, which was great. And uh, I don't know, it's really... Uh, it's, it's satisfying knowing that you have it and you can test your stuff before you get on the air. And, uh, you know, you want to protect that expensive radio. That's This is a way to do it. 
So that's all I have for you today. I really appreciate you guys sticking around and watching the video. Thank you so much. Um, the channel's doing great. Thanks everybody for all your support. All the comments are fantastic. Uh, feel free if I got anything wrong, leave me a comment down below. Just be nice about it. And uh, I really appreciate you guys, everything you've been doing and all the support I've been getting here on YouTube has been fantastic. I'm learning as I go. I'm learning how to be a ham and I'm learning how to be, uh, how to have a YouTube channel. And so, uh, it's a lot to learn, but it's been fun and challenging along the way. And that's, that's what makes it fun to me. So you guys, uh, thank you so much, uh, for all the support. I really appreciate it. Uh, until next time, uh, love you guys to death. Be good to one another. Seven, three.